I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Well, it's Rhema Praise time again, and we are here with you today. Yes. With a subject that I like, trusting what Jesus did for us. You see, many people know about Jesus, mm -hmm. but they don't know exactly what He did for us. He died on the cross for our salvation. Yes. But through that redemptive act on Calvary, He brought to us that are born again all kinds of great things. Yes. He redeemed us from sin and sickness and mm -hmm. disease and poverty and lack. He made it possible for us to have protection he made it possible for us to have the good life. In fact, he says, I have come that you can have life, life. and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. You see, we know what the blood of Jesus did for us, and we trust that. But many people don't know. He did so much more. He did so much more, but they don't know that we, yeah. he gave us the right to use the name of Jesus. Yes. He told his disciples, up to now, you've not asked anything in my name, mm -hmm. but from now on, ask in my name. Yes. And the Father will give it unto you. Yes. You see, the name of Jesus is powerful. We need to realize and trust what the Word says about Jesus. Yes. Let's go now where I talk about trusting what Jesus did for us. We just need to trust in what Jesus did for us. You know, during troubled times, <laughs> people sometimes focus on themselves and the problems that they're facing instead of believing God through Jesus Christ to get them through the situation. You know, sometimes fe people feel like everything's up to them and what they can do. And then some people think they can't recover because of whatever mistakes or whatever else happened. And some people are always saying, if I'd only done this, if I'd only done this. Well, the truth is God wants us to live by faith in what Jesus did for us at the cross and when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, He comes into our life, none of the things that I mentioned previously matter, they're gone. Amen? Now, I'm, I'm going to go to Galatians 3 for most of the, the, the teaching this morning. This is a great chapter. Galatians 3, I'm going to read verses 6 through 14. Galatians 3. In the same way, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. Now this is talking to the children of Abraham. This is talking about the spiritual children of Abraham, not the physical descendants of Abraham. We have been adopted in. And I don't have time to go all into all that teaching. What's more, the scripture looks forward to this time when God makes the Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. God proclaimed the good news to Abraham long ago and he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. But those who depend upon the law to make them right with God are under the, his curse. For the scripture says, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commandments that are written in God's book of the law. So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scripture said, It is through faith 
that the righteous person has life. This way of faith is very different from the way of the law, which says it's through obeying the law that, per, that a person has life. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he, hung, when he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoings. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who is, who is hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Now this is talking about Abraham and having faith in God. Uh, to really understand what Paul is talking about here in Galatians, you need to go back and read in the Old Testament about the Abrahamic covenant. Now, if you go into the Old Testament, you'll find that there were many covenants, the Adamic covenant, Mosaic covenant, all these covenants that God made. And God made a covenant with Abraham. And he said that he would bless him. He would redeem him spiritually from death. Uh, you know, Sometimes in the Word, you need to, when you're reading the Bible, you need to realize whether it means cessation of life or spiritual death. Because the Bible says we were dead in our trespasses and sin, yet we were breathing. So we were alive naturally, but we were dead spiritually. And so, in fact, if you want a really good explanation of this, get, get my dad's little book out there called Redeemed from the Curse of the Poverty, Sickness, and Death, which is second death. And God made a covenant with Abraham because he believed him. And through that covenant, he said he would bless, bless him, not only in the spiritual area, but in the natural area. Now, it is, when we get on, come right back down to it to us it comes through Christ Abraham believed God and it was counted to him righteous because he believed God but us it says Christ has rescued us or redeemed us it, it, here we want to want you to realize that it's because of what Christ did on the cross See, we need to trust in what happened at that, that cross. Now, we always talk about salvation and thank God that it, 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 it's the main part. But there was a whole lot of other things that took place at the cross also. One of the things is when we believe and trust in Jesus Christ, then all the promises of God become ours. The redemptive work of Christ on Calvary was sufficient and complete in, it, in itself. You remember on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished, and then his last breath escaped him. What he was talking about when he said it is finished, he was talking about the redemption of of mankind was finished. That's what he was talking about. It is finished. What is finished? The plan for the redemption of mankind from sin, sickness, and disease, from poverty and lack. See, sometimes we don't, we, we, we zero, and when you're ministering, sometimes you zero in on different things. And sometimes we don't pick up on the whole picture. And that's why I realize many of you know much, some of this that I'm speaking today. Some are new and, 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 it, and they don't know this. But you have to realize that it doesn't hurt any of us to be resharpened. How many of you have had to resharpen one of your knives? Sometimes we need to be resharpened on the things that Christ did when he said it is finished 
on the cross. He opened a whole brand new way of life when he said it's finished on the cross. You know, <laughs> the redemption story is not a continuing story. It was finished. The redemption was finished when he said that and he drew that last breath. And it was finished. And the culmination of it came when he was raised from the dead and went to sit down at the right hand of the Father in the seat of power. You see, if you go study history, you'll find out that the person that sat at the king's right hand, that was the number one person with all the power in the kingdom. That's where you get that saying, uh, the right hand man. Anybody ever heard that saying before? See, Jesus is sitting there. He is sitting there. Now, he, it, it's not an installment plan. It was paid, and Jesus is sitting there, and he said that those that become a part of his church, the Lord Jesus Christ church, he said all power and authority has been given unto them. You know, we used to sing a song, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin and left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. See, the writer of the Hebrews, which either was the Apostle Paul or one of his, one of his compadres, because it has the Pauline language in it, he knew all of these principles. That's why he could talk about Abraham the way he talked about it. That's why he could talk about a lot in all of his epistles. He could talk about this. You see, here, it, it, the, he is, the writer here is convinced of the all sufficiency of Christ's redemptive work on Calvary. In Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 9, 12, it says this, with his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves. He entered into the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. Now, if you don't understand the old the Israelites in the Old Testament, you do not understand this verse of Scripture because once a year, the high priest would have to go Behind the curtain, you had in the, the tabernacle and in the temple, you had the, the outer court, and then you had the inner court in the temple. Now, you had the surrounding court around that. It was called the Holy of Holies, and that's where the Ark of the Covenant was, and that's where the anointing and the power of God resided. And once a year, that high priest had to go through special sanctification, cleansings in order to walk into that room with the blood of the animal that, has been, that had been killed and sacrificed for a covering for their sin. And then they, they would wipe some of the blood on a, on a goat. They call it the scapegoat and they turn it loose in the wilderness they did it once a year. That's why the writer here says that once for all time secured our redemption. Now you see, that was a covering for sin. When Christ died on the cross and his blood was spilt on the cross, then when we receive Jesus Christ is our personal Savior because of the blood he shed on Calvary. Hey, it's once. We don't have to come back every day and ask for, for forgiveness as long as we live right and walk in line with the Word of God. If you happen to make a mistake, John says, just ask for forgiveness and Go on down the road. Don't premeditate it now. That's, that's another story. I ain't got time to go into that. All right? What Jesus did for us on that cross 
is he opened all of the promises of God for us. Now, just because you are born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the door is open for all of the promises doesn't mean that they're going to fall on you. Like my dad used to say, ripe cherries off a tree. I don't know where he got that from, but he did. I grew up in Pentecost, and if you'll go and study, the forefathers of the Pentecostal organization, they recognized the and wholly trusted in the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. They would sing songs like this. My hope is built on nothing less than blood, Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Another song they would sing is, I will sing of my Redeemer and of his wondrous love for me. On the cruel cross he suffered, from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh, sing, my Redeemer. With the blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and made me free. You know, we need to always come to God anytime we're coming to him. That's why Jesus said pray in his name. We come in the all-sufficiency of Christ redemptive work at Calvary. Anybody getting out anything out of this? Now, there's another thing we need to realize. Sometimes we don't. Well, I don't say we. Uh, sometimes some people don't. Let me put it that way. The insufficiency of our human efforts. See, the battle that we face many times is letting go of what we can do. Why are we like that? Because that is our human nature. Our human nature is to take care of it ourselves. How many times, I'm going to prove it, how many times, guys, have you been messing with, fixing something around the house or something. And your wife said, why don't you get a professional? <laughs> oh, no, I can do this, I can do this. And you get in a bigger mess. Anybody besides me want to raise your hand? <laughs> that, and we, we go that way when it comes to the things, you know, of God sometimes. We are trying to help it. You know, well, God said this and then we try to help him. See, we need to let go. Let go of our past success and failures. Let go of our education, our intelligence, or the lack of it. Doesn't make any difference what we got. It doesn't have anything to do with, with the sufficiency of Christ. It has everything to do with our insufficiency. You know, God has used people through the years, and there's, there's hundreds of them, one of them being my father, Kenneth E. Hagin, coming off that bed of affliction. Many, many that have come to Ramah that have gone out and realized their insufficiency. One that I'm thinking about is a great example of, of somebody, like he, he said to me when I was in Brazil with him before he went on with the Lord, he said, I don't have no, spe I didn't have any special status. I'm just a truck driver. I'm talking about Bud Wright. Bud and Jan Wright came to Rama. They graduated in 1983 and went to Brazil and started, bar he, he didn't go to language school. He learned the language on the street and began to minister to the people. He, 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 preached, in the, he preached in the native language. Uh, 
Tim Rogers, that's head of Rama, Mexico. When he graduated from Rama, he went down to he went down to Guatemala. He learned the language on the street and was preaching. And some of the people that was going to language school still couldn't preach. <laughs> down there in Mexico, they think he's one of them. <laughs> but and he raised they, he raised up what. I don't know how many Raymond campuses they have now. I don't know how many churches they have, 380, 400, I don't know. You know, all because a truck driver realized his insufficiency, but he recognized the sufficiency of Christ. I'm thinking of another young man. He graduated from Raymond in May of 1980. In September of 1980, he bought a one-way ticket to the Philippines and he landed in Manila, the Manila, Philippines. Didn't know anybody and all he had was 20 U.S. dollars in his pocket. And now he has about 300 churches underneath his supervision. Rama Mindanao and he has over 600 pastors. They're not all of him from him, but it's other pastors from other denominations and some independent that have asked him to be help them be their head. And hey, it's all because he recognized his insufficiency and recognized the sufficiency of Christ and believing what the Bible says. That's what we all need to do. He didn't go over there with some big dream or some big vision. He just went over there and said, I'm going to minister the word. Come on now. What causes us to step out of the aching void of nothingness with nothing under us except our faith? It's the sufficiency of what Christ did at Calvary. You need to get to the point that you really trust what Jesus did. You trust many things every day. Mm -hmm. If you sat out in a chair, you trusted that that chair would hold you up because if you wouldn't have, you would have tested it to see if it's going to hold you up. We trust many things. If the boss tells us that we're, go that we're going to get a raise on our next paycheck, we go out and make a purchase trusting what the boss said. So we need to learn to do the same thing with Jesus, trusting what he said he would do for us and believe it, act like it's so, and live like it's so. You know, honey, you were talking at the beginning of the uh, program about the power in the name of Jesus. Right. And you know, we always taught our children that. Right. That, hey, uh, there is power in that name. Right. And I will never forget one time I was talking to Denise, our daughter, uh, on the phone, uh, there was the the it's her cell phone. Uh huh. The um, the schools were closing because the streets were icy. Right. And so I was actually asking her, you know, how how bad are the streets? Because she was on her way home. She I was think. on the way to, to get the children. Oh, to get her boys. Uh huh. And so all of a sudden, I heard her say, "Jesus, Jesus." Well, I knew because we had taught them when you're in trouble, you speak the name of Jesus. Right. So I knew something had happened. Right. And of course, I just, you know, agreed with her. I called on the name too. Yeah. So whenever um, she was able to talk to me again, she said, Mom, she said, there was a car that was out of control that was headed right toward me. And he, she said, and this makes me cry, she said, as I spoke the name of Jesus, as I said, Jesus, that's all I had time to say. She said, that car got in control and it just went the other way. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Amen and Hallelujah. amen. Hallelujah. I just get goosebumps oh, yeah. thinking about That's it That's great, man. Well, we have a great offer. Oh, yes. Uh, your dad's, uh, this is called a Slim Wine book, uh, How to Turn Your Faith Loose. Mm -hmm. Awesome revelation to know, you know, how to turn your faith loose in yeah. order for it to People work People are always saying, have faith. Well, how do you do it? And this yeah. tells you how to turn it loose. I always like the how-to books. Yes. You know, it's kind of like, 
We know that we're supposed to, to operate in love. Yeah. But tell me how to do it sometimes when I don't want to love. Another three CDs by you, keeping stress from becoming and distress. distress and, yes. Uh, we live in stressful times. That will help you. And then your uh, three CDs by your dad, casting your cares upon the Lord. And, you know, sometimes we'll cast them, but then we want to take them back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll teach you how to. All of that totally. is available for a gift of $28 or more. That's so right. just go to go to your computer right now and go to rhema.org and order those right now. That's right. And something new on our website uh, at rhema.org, there are messages by your dad that you can uh, click on and, and, and watch them. There are some video messages as well as some audio messages. It's called Timeless Teachings. It is. And yes. so you will enjoy those, those messages. I encourage you to go and click on them. They are free. And then September the 24th through the 26th, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yes. 20th Kindle the Flame Women's Conference. Yeah, it's the 20th year. That's right. My goodness, yeah, my no, goodness. We're going to have an awesome time. So uh, you can register at rhema.org slash KTF. Yes. You know, we have a lot of great partners that help us to keep this program going all over the world. We get reports from all over the world. And somebody said, well, what is a word partner? Well, it's somebody that prays for us regularly mm -hmm. and sends an offering at least once a month, whatever they can afford to send to help support this program and support Rama. And if you want to find out more about it, just go to rama.org slash WPC and all the information's there. Uh, if you're not a partner and you want to become a partner, go right there, rama.org slash WPC. If you are a partner, we want to thank you because you're helping us to bring hope, help, help and, and healing. healing to the, the world. world. Casting all your care, casting all of your concerns, casting all of your anxieties, casting all of your worries upon Him. Now why? Because He cares about you affectionately and He cares for you watchfully. Casting your cares upon the Lord, an encouraging and timely three CD series, plus a slimline book, How to Turn Your Faith Loose, both by Kenneth E. Hagan and a powerful three CD series by Kenneth W. Hagen, Keeping Stress from Becoming Distress. To stay out of stress and strain, it takes God. Our understanding, our wisdom is very finite, but His is unlimited. The six CDs and Slimline book can be yours for a gift of $28 or more. So call toll free right now, 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.